Okay, so this is uh, my finished uh, project here. Uh, this is my uh, European American Arms uh, import from uh, Sestava PAP model. Uh, I guess this is like the first generation. These, this one, uh, this one was here before the you know the NPAP and the OPAP came out. Uh, like I said, this is from European American Arms. Uh, pretty much what they did at that time was, uh, you know, they imported imported them as a uh, sporting configuration, meaning uh, I had a thumb hole stock, and then they had like a single stack magazine, ten rounders. Um, pretty much uh, the mods I did to this uh, are as follows. Um, for starters, um, I widened out the trunnion. In order for it to um, to fit the regular uh, double stack magazines, uh, next I uh, took out the thumb hole stock. Originally it had like an adjustable and four stock, but I wanted to upgrade a little bit, so I went with the with the the ace. Uh, what is that bones? I'm sorry, the ace skeleton stock, uh, along with the ace uh, Yugo block. And then, uh, <clears throat> you know, of course, I replaced the, the pistol grip, um, the trigger. I took out the trigger, the original trigger, uh, because, like, like I say, it was in a sporting configuration. So there was, uh, you know, no 922R compliance parts on this. So I installed a, a TAPCO G2 trigger on this. I don't know if you can see it. But yeah, it's a Tapco G2 trigger, uh, double hook as well. Uh, like I said, I went out the trunnion. I got a, I actually have a recoil buffer in this. That's why I can't, I can't like lock it back in place with the, with the notch right here, because uh, you know the, the, the buffer is like right here, so it only goes like this much back, and I can't lock the, the handle, the charging handle in place. Using using the notch that's uh, you know meant for it. Um, like I said, it was sporting configuration, therefore it didn't have uh, the threaded muzzle. So I threaded the muzzle myself. I had a slant brake on it, but I recently just uh, ended up putting a seventy four style brake from Tepco. And then if you guys were following, um, I ended up doing a third coat job on this. I ended up going with the with the H and K semi gloss black color. Uh, I've got to say it's it's pretty nice, a good color. It's uh, definitely an upgrade from the Parkerized finish that I had before. It's not the you know the glossiest, but you know it was a semi gloss. Definitely looks better up close in person. Um, another. Modification did to it was uh, the grips here, uh, the Ford grip. This one came on a different rifle, but I took it off and, um, you know, I custom stained it myself. Wanted to go with the orange. Uh, it looks like super orange here, but up close, you know, it looks, you know, like a more fair orange. Definitely not as, you know, brilliant as this makes it look. It's like a, almost like a neon color, but you know, it's not. It's not that. It is glossy though. I went with a gloss, uh, with a gloss finish on this, the polyurethane. It's a few coats. I lost count of the coats of you know, of the custom dye that I mix with uh, with the semi gloss and uh, acetone as a base, and then after you know, you know all that the coats were all said and done. I ended up going with the just uh, one single coat of uh, the clear clear coat it came out pretty good. I like it. Uh, this was uh, you know one of the newer uh, Tapco mags that came out. You know without the you know the ribs going all around it. And then what I did, I had some of that uh, dye left over, and I just you know I went over it on this. 
it's not a you know perfect match, but um, I mean it looks good. I also went with a and I uh, direct quoted the magazine. It looks really good on this too as well when I put it on. Um, and of course, I safety check this. There's nothing in here, and definitely nothing in the chamber. Pretty proud of it, the outcome. Looks a lot better than it did before. As a comparison, I have here uh, my father's uh, Sestava. This was actually an uh, import from um, Sentry Arms. As you can see the Sentry Arms stamp here. Uh, this one was also. I guess one of the first ones that they brought out, like I said, it has the you know the the rail mounted um, cover here. The newer ones, you know, the NPAP and the OPAP, they come with a, a smooth smooth cover. Um, this one has not given us, or has not given my father any issues with the feeding and extracting. Uh, I guess Sentry Arms. Did a good job on this one. Um, originally, I thought it had the double stack bolt in there because it was, you know, functioning properly. But then I took it apart and actually um, compared it to the the original bolt that I had on this because I actually swapped out the bolt in this one as well. And then um, turns out it has a single stack bolt still in there. But um, you know. Why fix what you know? What ain't broken? And now uh, this, you know, it's working properly. It's feeding properly, extracting properly. Have no issues whatsoever with it. Um, this one came with uh, the regular mags, and uh, this one actually also came with uh, with this wood hand guard. So this one came with a wood hand guard, and it also came with a thumb hole stock. So I had to modify this adapter to fit. I had a similar setup on on this one as well before I swapped it out. And uh, this one also came with a regular square back, while well, this one has a slant back. So that's another difference. This one also came with a tap hook trigger. This one came with a single, single hook trigger. And what he did to this, well, what I did for him for this, I got on this hole grip. It's you know, it's a good grip. I like it. It already fills up your palm. Compared to this one, this one's really thin. Compared to that one, uh, you can see the you know the space you know you have here compared to this one. This one pretty much fills it in all the way, so it fills in your palm better. I'm debating whether to get one of these for myself for this one, or go with the U.S. palm grip. I think that U.S. palm looks really nice. It, it looks really comfortable. I think I'm gonna go with that one eventually. Um, but like I said, this one already came with the trigger. Uh, this one already came with a threaded muzzle. With this one, I said I had to thread the muzzle myself. Came with a, already with a threaded muzzle and a slant brake. So, you know, a traditional slant brake. And uh, he installed the UTG Pro. Quad rail. This is a UM70 model, so it fills in the you know fills in the gaps really nice compared to the one that I had. I had a universal one, so I had gaps. I had a gap here, and also here I believe. Uh, maybe you can see the differences in the finish. In the barrels. All right. So.
So you can see the differences here. The finish. It's not a whole lot in camera, but in person you can really tell the difference. This finish on the bottom stands out a whole lot more. Um, all in all, i got to say they're both pretty good rifles. Um, I haven't had a problem with neither. I actually had problems with this one before I did the conversion. That single stack bolt was just horrible, even with the single stack mags. I had a few, um, a few stove pipes here and there. And I haven't had a single stove pipe since I did the modification on this one. And I think I'm going over a thousand rounds since. Well, that's about it, guys. Um, let me know what you guys think. Uh, I don't know if you guys need any help finding parts. All right. Okay, so one more thing on the parts. Uh, this, like I said, this was uh, the Ace stock adapter. This is meant for a U1 assembly. Which is, you know, what this is, you know, pretty much, you know, derived from UOM70. Um, they, uh, after I bought it and I received it in the mail, they sent me a, a booklet with my order, like a booklet or a brochure of their, um, you know, the parts they have for sale. And uh, in this booklet, uh, they actually showed uh, a block specifically for this, um, you know, Sestaba PAP slant cut receiver. Um, like I said, I didn't see this until after I received, uh, you know, the whole package here, which was the, you know, the stock and the, the block. Um, and I was like, damn, I should have, I should have gotten that one, you know. So I went to the website, but they didn't show it on the website. So like I said, they showed it on the booklet, but they didn't show it on the website. So if there's something you want to look into, uh, is you could probably just give them a call and order directly over the phone. I mean, if they show it on the booklet, they should have some kind of, you know, part number for it. Um, with this, the beauty of this one, uh, if you don't like this gun in the stock, you know, it's not your thing. Maybe you want to go within a adjustable stock. Uh, with this block here, you can actually get a separate piece. They call the pig nose. I guess pig nose adapter, I don't know. What it is, is it actually screws on to the, to the block here. And then you have a, you know, the, an actual adapter for the, like a M4 buffer tube, which is this. And then you can screw like this directly to the, to the adapter. And you have a, you know, nice solid, uh, you know, hardware on your PAP rifle. So with this, you could go with either or. Another thing I noticed about the, the PAP um, slant cut model, uh, it has more um, screw holes. Uh, this one only has them, has this two screw holes on the bottom, which is like right here, which is where you see the screws right here. And this actually sits really low, as you can see. It sits like below where uh, a regular square cut receiver would sit. Uh, the other one has the option where you can bring it up higher. And I think that's a good option, so you can have it sit up higher, which I would like. See so you could you know better uh, see the sights. Well, that's about it. Um, I guess uh, like I said, you know, if you guys have any more questions, you guys could uh, you know send me some some messages and uh, respond to them as I can. I uh, hope you guys like the project. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you.